Okay. <coughs> then, talk about the situation in Mill Creek Park, please. And by the way, for everyone watching, we're on the edge of Mill Creek Park. We have Mill Creek Park in the background. Greetings. Then, Okay, this is the day before Mother's Day 2016. Uh, a couple of days ago, I believe it was, um, <clears throat> let's see, the 6th, Thursday, they had a meeting at the Metro Parks Farm for the public to come and view the bike path extension that will be um, built by Mill Creek Park to connect the current bike path down to Columbiana, going through Green Township. Uh, we love bike paths. All the people are, are very favorable toward riding their bikes. There was a couple of people who lived in the country who were very uh, reclusive, who stated they didn't want people from the city coming near their property. However, by and large, people were very favorable, however, very worried because <clears throat> uh, we have public records all through 2012, 2013, 2014 about the Sunoco Logistics uh, Limited Liability Company, their frack pipeline, frack product pipeline. It's an ethane pipeline that conducts the uh, product from the Utica Shale uh, past Mill Creek Metro Parks going under the bike path there. They granted rights of way to this company to put their frack pipeline under the park there and you can see it rises above ground at Leffingwell and 11. And then it continues uh, to go through uh, Canfield. The park once again granted rights of way and they receive $125,000 every time they grant a right of way, or maybe more, it's in the public records. <clears throat> they granted rights of way for Sunoco to put this same pipeline following the old 1930s gasoline line which was replaced and the new frack line next to it. This is key, this is in the public records. We had no way of knowing. We kept asking Mill Creek Park. They said, this is only a gasoline line. But the public records that reveal that this is the uh, extension from the Mariner East pipeline going through Pennsylvania. Okay, so <clears throat> it goes under Hitchcock Woods. And incidentally, back on July 9th of, uh, 2015 when we had torrential rains that was the day they were boring under Hitchcock Woods to put this frack pipeline in and we had major E. coli in uh, Cohasset, uh, Newport, Newport, Cohasset and Glacier. Now we've had E. coli incidences before not so great so as to kill fish but I believe the parts per million previously were never over 900 parts per million which is pretty bad but I believe they quoted the parts per million at July 9th were around 3,800 or 38,000. I'm not sure. It was a huge amount of E. coli. So residents asked questions. They shut them down. Uh, they asked, could they have hit a uh, sewer line? They said, no, this is what happens because of the sewer runoff when there's big rain. Anyway, I digress. They had a meeting Thursday night about... Uh, they brought out these beautiful maps that were designed by um, the company that's, you know, doing the work and they uh, presented it. Environmental Development of Portage County. I met a man named Ken Checha or something. He says he's Polish. He says he's all for fracking. He thinks fracking is a good thing and he used to be in the fracking business. He said he designed those maps and that um, you know this bike path is going through. Well, when I spoke to Steve Avery, who's Mill Creek Park, um, you know he's in charge of development, assisting development, as as is Justin Rogers. <clears throat> I said at this meeting, Steve, the people want an assurance that you aren't going to grant rights of way for frac product pipeline to go under these bike paths. He says we would never do that. I said, Steve, <clears throat> we have the public records. It has your signatures on it, you know, working with Sunoco Logistics. And you're granted rights away right behind this building under the Metro Parks bike path. 
for the Sunoco Logistics frack pipeline. He goes, that's a gasoline line. I said, Steve, it's in the public records. It follows the gasoline 1930s Sunoco route, and they replaced the gasoline line, but they added the ethane pipeline that goes out to the cryogenic plant at New Middletown Road and State Line Road. And that makes this gas cold so they can blast it through the pipes down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it's export for plastics. So this is all research that Youngstown citizens have done. That's why they have their Youngstown Community Bill of Rights to ban fracking near Mill Creek Metro Parks in our protected drinking area of the Meander Reservoir and near our homes because our Alec Governor Kasich, American Legislative Exchange Council Kasich, has put on the books laws that exempt the fracking industry from any type of zoning. So we can't zone this one industry away from our homes. They can put a frack pad 150 feet from our house. So when I said that to uh, Steve Avery, he was very embarrassed. When I went to Justin Rogers and I said, Justin, we need assurances that you are not going to sign rights of way to put frack pipelines under this bike path. He says, we do whatever our superiors tell us to do. Okay, that's pretty scary. So what next? Well, the people need to make themselves aware. The people need to realize that we have a, an executive director in there right now who puts business interests far above those of the people of Youngstown. That was evidenced by him firing the naturalists, the horticulturalists, and getting a bunch of Jeeps. Um, check out Geauga Parks, where an ALEC uh, Governor Kasich appointee, Grindell, appointed a park commission that has flipped and changed, and now they have oil and gas harvesting going on right outside their parks. Uh, check out our ALEC Governor Kasich's appointee, Rusu, was originally appointed by Kasich, he did win an election, uh, appointing of park commissioners who did the business of, um, you know, Sunoco Logistics frack pipeline. So the people need to be aware of this. They need to call for resignations. They need to protest. They need to get local people in. Um, it's just Specifically disgraceful. resignations of who? I would say Aaron Young, uh, as far as the executive director goes, as far as park commissioners go, Dr. Durek and uh, Mr. Reagan. So they need to go. They worked with the pipeline, as did Shivoni, Maseko, Marrow. So those were the park commissioners who worked with Dennis Miller, the former executive uh, director, and that's when the frack pipeline went under. Now. Okay. One minute left. Okay. Um, I hope, you know, I heard a little bing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm easily distracted that the people need not be easily distracted. They need to be like pit bulls on this. They need to be getting the public records up to the current day and finding out what's the correspondences between uh, Kasich and Aaron Young, or the ODNR and Aaron Young, uh, the frack companies and Aaron Young, any oil and gas company and Aaron Young. Um, what is going on? What's the plan that they have in place? Why did he get rid of all naturalists and horticulturalists? He didn't get rid of, you know, people who work with the pipeline industry. They're still firmly installed. Um, we don't know what his intent is. We know that the, they edited the Mill Creek Park mission statement under Clark Johnson to read that it has to be economically feasible. That was in 2011. 